just so you're aware, it's freezing outside. Um, so I'm just gonna put this on my bench and do it hopefully when the day is not negative two degrees. So let's just get this thing out of the car. And it's really heavy. Okay. See? No problems. Oh, God. It is freezing. Goodness gracious. All right, everybody. I'm super excited about this one. Um, it is a balmy 34 degrees. Uh, that's why it's been taking so long. Uh, it's finally warm enough to be able to actually work in the shop for a couple of minutes uh, and so hopefully I get some time and I can assemble my 14 inch uh, bandsaw. Uh, it's a Rikon, uh, it's a resaw bandsaw um, so I'm very excited it'll be a great addition to the shop. Um, so um, I also have a rigid oscillating belt and spindle sander. Um, I haven't gotten a chance to be able to even open this yet, and it's been months. Uh, it's just been so cold here in um, uh, western Michigan, and uh, it's just it's just cold. Uh, it's been like two degrees or below. Uh, so let's go ahead and get going. As you can probably see on the video, you can see my breath. Uh, it's cold in the shop, so let's hit it. too many of those. I gotta design one. You know, everybody has their own push sticks. Really should design my own with, you know, the Roberts Flare. That might be one of the projects coming up. Holy crap! I don't know why I didn't think that was going to be, you know, 75 pounds. <laughs> um, take caution when lifting that. Holy crap. All right. Well, that's out of the way. That is a nice fence. I am very excited about that. <laughs>
resaw bar. Something to keep in mind. Um, when you're using a bandsaw and you've got that flat fence, uh, every once in a while you'll have like a little bit of a twist and bow and you can push a lot of strain on that bandsaw blade. And what this does is that you have a constant amount of pressure only where the blade is so that way when you're going along even if it bends a little bit it'll still uh, only apply that even pressure so um, prevent a lot of binding this will help a lot looks like some more accessories and stuff I'll have to look into it a little bit later pull I might need some help it's kind of heavy big it's not heavy it's just awkward no clean parts of my shop. I know from this angle it actually doesn't look terrible, but it's bad. It's bad. Don't tell the wife. All right, and just like that, movie magic, and see how easy that is? All you gotta do is just, okay, that was really hard. <laughs> it's really heavy. Um, my wife exercises a lot and her and I together <clears throat> had struggled getting it out of that piece of styrofoam. So grab you and a buddy and three beers uh, cause it is really heavy. Be careful. Okay, let's, uh, let's put this on the rolling stand and uh, we'll go to the next step. So. Let's get the go. Let's get uh, the roll stand assembled. Go. Okay, I'm gonna try to assemble from this side of the bench so that way you guys can see what I'm doing here. Um, I got the uh, stand set up. Um, I found this when um, rolling stand mobile base thing. Um, I'm gonna be putting that together on this stand and uh, you know my bandsaw will be able to move around. But uh, first we gotta Finish what we were doing, so let's go ahead and pull our stand out here. Alright, so we got our four legs. This is the top of our base. Okay, so after actually reading the instructions, the legs here, these go on the outside of this platform with the bottom, this little whole section here. I don't know if you can see it on the camera or not. That goes up because I'm, I'm doing this upside down. Then each one of these screws, let me get in another way so you can actually see this thing. Um, each one of these screws has, uh, man, it's really hard to see here. Um, a screw, a washer, and these are kind of like little tiny itty bitty carriage bolts because I got the, the square head on the end there. Uh, it's really hard to see on the camera. There we go. So it's got that square head there. Um, they go in from the outside through that turn and then they go in through here and they go washer and nut. Alright, and I'm just going to go ahead and breeze all the way through this. Um, I'm not even going to bother recording it because it's just rinse and repeat. Put a bunch of screws in the holes. Okay, so I got all of those in. 
There are three screws for every leg. Um, hey, no, never mind to all the garbage over there. Um, yeah, yeah, I don't pay attention to that. Um, okay, so now I'm ready for the middle shelf. Again, this is all just rinse and repeat. Um, all you're going to do is you're going to put one of these screws through here and then you're gonna put that through. I pointed to it, but it's off camera. I keep forgetting you guys aren't here. Uh, through one of these holes, through there, then put on a washer and a nut. And you're just gonna do it for all four legs. Uh, again, just rinse and repeat, so it's not even really worth my time to, to show you guys, but you know how to put in a screw. Here's something to kind of note. Um, I'm assembling this upside down and I want a flat shelf, but I guess if you wanted to, you could flip this over and have a lipped shelf. Um, I don't really know what the lip would be for other than to catch a whole bunch of sawdust. But if for some strange reason you wanted a lipped shelf, I guess you could, because it will go both directions. Okay, mind the mess in the background, but I've got it onto its base. Uh, luckily, my wife was willing to help me. Um, we slid it along the back here, um, along my table and onto the base until it was flat. And then we kind of just shimmied it a little bit until the holes lined up. We put the bolts in through, nice long bolts that go straight through the base and into the actual like blue base. And it is on its rolling stand, so. Move it! <laughs> Woo! Okay, that's enough. <laughs> uh, I'm done for the day. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and finish setting this thing up. I will make sure to record it, but um, for this uh, particular night, it is freezing and I'm going inside. So, <laughs> see you later. Alright everybody, um, it's been about four weeks um, since I bought my bandsaw and got it onto the stand. Uh, it has just been far too cold here in Michigan um, and uh, uh, we finally have a uh, warm day. Uh, it is a whopping 40 degrees right now. Nope, can't see my breath so it's above freezing. So uh, my garage door is open. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and move forward and uh, get this thing finally, finally assembled. Let's get started. All right, I got the uh, table out of the packing here. Um, it's covered in packing grease, no surprise. Um, most of this stuff can get kind of sticky, especially in the cold, which it's 40 degrees, it's pretty cold. Um, getting it off can actually be quite difficult, but I found that just using a rag and um, just here's just a rag but a follow up with some mineral spirits uh, that should thin it out and it should get rid of it um, real easy after I'm done with the entire thing because this is cast iron I am going to follow up with um, ND Sapphire uh, which is a product of mine um, that helps prevent rust especially on cast iron objects so I'm gonna clean this up with some mineral spirits and we'll get this mounted onto the trunnion. All right, um, I found the screws for the tabletop. Uh, they're in this little kind of bag, I guess. Could have just been a Ziploc, I guess. Um, it's got this zipper on the top, and uh, I was having a heck of a time opening that thing up, and now it just opened up because I'm on camera, of course. So make sure you're on camera and you can open this thing with no problem. All right, uh, just so you're aware, um, these are the bolts that go into the table. It's kind of hard to see if it ever focused. Stop focusing on my face. All right, there we go. All right, so these are the bolts. Um, use one locking nut, or locking washer, pardon me, and then one regular washer, uh, and they go in this direction, up through the trunnion, which I'll show right now while I'm over talking. Um, and then it goes through the trunnion and into the table. Okay, so uh, we got it in. Uh, it's hand tightened right now and that's pretty much it so far. Um, this thing is pretty heavy and awkward. 
Uh, it's not ridiculous, but it's definitely uh, a two-person job. Just because you have to adjust the table a bunch of times, anybody who can lift this, which may be 35, 45 pounds, I don't know, I didn't, I didn't weigh it, but I mean, it's pretty heavy. Um, as long as somebody can lift it and then kind of like shimmy it a little bit, as long as you can get those, those threads lined up to the holes in the bottom, um, it, it, it goes in fairly easy. Um, uh, I did use the Allen wrench just because there's not a whole lot of room. And again, it's 40 degrees outside, so I don't have a whole lot of dexterity. Uh, but that might be something that you want to make sure that you can do, uh, is that you have at least somebody here to help set this table. Um, and preferably somebody to help you get this thing out of your car as you saw earlier in this video. So. Yeah, uh, I'm gonna put these screws in. Uh, I'll try to get a good view for you guys, uh, but no promises. All right, I, uh, I got the uh, view. So here's the trunnion on the underside of the cast iron table. Um, this is the locking, so that way it doesn't move. Uh, it's set to unlock right now so I can rotate it because the next step says rotate this to 45 degrees after these are hand tightened in. So these are the two, this one over here, um, I put in uh, with my wife. And then this, never had this before by the way, it's a tilter, so it actually tilts by turning a knob. How exciting is that? So anyway, I tilt it to 45 degrees, and it says do not tighten all the way. I gotta go around to the camera to get to this and I'll see if I can get a better view. All right, you know, one advantage of recording this entire thing is the fact that I have my light on right now, so it's super bright, so I can actually see everything. Um, <laughs> uh, so I have the table set to about 45 degrees. It's actually at 40 degrees, but I have more than enough clearance here. I don't know if it's actually important to get it to, to 45 or not. I actually can't quite get it to 45. Um, We'll find out um, later if this is actually accurate from the factory. But anyway, it just says screw in the screw in these nuts, and all you got it or yeah, nuts. Screw in these nuts, these bolts, and you just gotta kind of have to shimmy the table a little bit so you can get those started. And as soon as they're started, um, I just do it so they're not super tight. Um, because you don't want to over tighten these because if you tighten them too much then you have no play or adjustment um, and so you really want to just kind of really just get them in I'm sorry my hand is in the way I kind of have to you know do that to to do this all right so now both of those are in um, and then it says return the table back to 90 Okay, so uh, it's been a handful of weeks since the last time uh, I recorded anything. Uh, it's finally warm enough. Um, it's about uh, 48 degrees right now, so just a hoodie. Um, again, I live in Michigan, so that's pretty good for me. Um, I've been covering this up with the uh, plastic to try to prevent any rust because I haven't done really anything with it for a little bit. Um, sorry this video is taking so long, but you know, all good things must, you know, I guess you gotta wait. But, <laughs> and I have a full-time job and a family and several other things. But anyway, let's go ahead and continue. Okay, so we're on the back side of the fence now and we have to put this fence support bolt in there. Basically what it is is when the fence comes on the left hand side here uh, it won't fall down so basically all it is is just kind of like a support so all it is is back this out um hold on you gotta of course i'm not prepared this is pretty typical for me okay so you've got one washer and one nut put the nut on first and then put on the washer and then this gets screwed into the tap hole on the back. So here's the power buttons on the front. It's on the back on this side here. And all you're going to do is just screw that in. 
Um, I'm assuming you're going to screw it in until it stops. Nope. There actually isn't a stop on this, so you could probably go until you're maybe one thread out or so. And then all you're going to do is just tighten this nut here down. It's a, uh, it's a 13 mil, it's a 13 mil wrench. Oh. -da, don't over tighten, it's cast iron, so don't crank down on that sucker. Alright everybody, I've got um, the front here and um, I had to lower my tripod, so I know it looks like you're looking up my nose, so apologize for that. Uh, <laughs> but here we go. So, um... Here's the front end of the uh, the, the uh, table here. Um, and basically what we're going to do is we're going to put on our fence rail. Um, we're going to unscrew the front two here and drop them. Make sure you drop them so, you know, so you lose them. All right. So now I'm going to pull one washer off of each and uh, they go in the front section here. Um, so again, make sure you're dropping your stuff. So put the washer on, put the nut on. I'm just going to hand tighten these and then I'll tighten them down off camera. Um, there's no reason for you to watch me fumble around with uh, with these, you know, other than, you know, incredible entertainment. Um, the alignment will come later. Um, I'm probably going to do a completely separate video on alignment and adjustment on this thing because I'm going to have to do some more research um, to find exactly how to do it and I'm going to try to condense it uh, as much information as I can on multiple um, videos to be able to condense it into one. I'll try to keep it short, but as you can tell, most of my videos are pretty long. So, um, I'll try to keep it short, but, you know, it's a lot. So, um, anyway, I'm going to go tighten this up and we'll get to the next step. Alright everybody, it's Mike from the future. I finally tightened down that uh, fence rail and I will tell you that there is not a whole lot of room to be able to fit a wrench in there. Um, you kind of have to like move to one side and then you have to like flip the wrench over and then kind of get like another like half turn, like quarter turn, tiny little bit. Um, there's not a lot of space. Um, my recommendation would be to back the fence out a little bit away from the table and then tighten the nuts that are on this side of the table, a little closer to you. Um, it just doesn't work the other way very well. I was kind of hoping to get the rail closer to the blade to try to get less slop um, uh, with uh, threads moving and that kind of stuff just as far as the, you know, thought process in my brain anyway. Um, but um, I'm just going to um, tighten it up the way that I did and um, in the review and the alignment and the adjustment section, I'll make sure to have video of all of that information. So stay tuned for that. Everybody, we're going to be installing the um, blade guard um, hand knob wheel doohickey thing. Anyway, very technical term. Um, <laughs> so inside here, there's a set screw. I don't know if you can see that or not, but it's right there. Um, and so I had to back it out like, I don't know, a turn or two. Um, so that way I could get it on here. Um, by default, I believe that this is about, you know, straight down um, the flat side here. Um, so I'm just going to do that. It's on the opposite side. The set screw is on the opposite side of the handle. So the handle will be facing up. Um, and I kind of just kind of see if I can get that thing on there. we go. All right. And now tighten that down. And of course there is no space for movement so um, I wonder if I can get in here not really 
not really a whole lot of movement in here. I'm gonna grab my T Allen. Um, that might help because it's got a longer handle. We'll be right back. Okay, definitely get yourself a T Allen. So it's loose right now, it's not doing anything. Um, and then you can easily get there and there's plenty of room to be able to twist and turn that guy down. So now, There's probably another adjustment that I haven't read yet. I'm not weak. Eh. You know, sometimes you just have to step back and say you're an idiot. Um, this thing would not turn at all. I don't know why. There's a knob right here on the back. It prevents this from moving. Stay tuned for the extra video. <laughs> right, so the next one is down, 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 low. No, no, you gotta, you gotta go down. Oh, I got this. It's fine. It's this guy. So yeah, this works. All right. So another one of these wheels, uh, apparently this is the tensioner for the blade, um, and so I'm gonna put this guy on. Um, again, use one of these. They're just so much use, more useful than the you know, provided ones. Cool, all set. Yeah, I'm just a short guy. Okay, so <laughs> I'm crouching down here so I can be in the shot along with what we're actually doing. Um, we're installing the tool holder next. Uh, basically all it is is it's just gonna hold some Allens. Um, I probably won't use this very often. I'm probably gonna end up using my T Allens which are just, you know, sitting in a bin. So, and just, they're right here anyway. I mean, I have a wood shop. So anyway, um, I'm gonna install it anyway just because I don't wanna wander around with this thing. So uh, it just takes a Phillips, um, so. I don't know how well this is going to go. It looks like it's packed full of something. Oh, that was easy. Um, I typically don't drive this thing too hard. Um, I typically go somewhere around 10, like 10 pounds of pressure. I don't know exactly what this is. Or 10 newtons. There's probably not a lot of newtons. That's, that's really, really weak. Uh, <laughs> but it's probably 10 pounds per square inch or something, or foot pounds maybe, I don't know. But if you know, put it in the comments because I kind of want to know. Um, but anyway, all I do is just kind of tighten it down and then, yep, that baby's not going anywhere. Y you have to say that, you, you do. Hey, um, I know it sounds like I'm on my tiptoes because I kind of am. Um, so here's the back. Um, this knob here, it's for the blade tensioner. You know how I screwed up earlier in the video and said that the one below was the blade tensioner? It's not the blade tensioner. It's this one. Also, just so you're aware, this doesn't get secured uh, with any screws or nuts or anything like that, uh, which kind of scares me because if this thing falls off or gets lost or whatever, I'm going to be kind of upset. Um, I might end up like installing a magnet or something on this and actually keeping it like right here. Um, so that way it's, it's always attached. Um, I might also put one on the inside here, um, or magnetize this center post or something like that. I might figure out something to do, um, to be able to keep it on there. Cause, um, not that I'm going to adjust to the tension on this thing a whole lot, but, and you know, something that, you know, would be kind of good to know. And then the last thing, uh, you just set that on there. Um, and then the last thing you have this, uh, it's this little plastic like shoe looking thing. Um, and basically all this is, is it's the uh, dust cover for the blade guard. Um, well, you know, when it goes up and down, um, uh, it just keeps dust out of it. But uh, anyway, that's actually it. Let's uh, go ahead and do a final word. Okay, so my first impressions, um, I haven't even run a blade through this thing yet. The, um, my cable is still even twist tied. Um, 
It's fully assembled. It took me a really, really long time to assemble this thing. Um, not because of how difficult it is, but just because of uh, personal things that are going on in my life or, um, you know, not being able to get into the shop as much as I, I could um, and the weather and so on and so forth. It was just so cold. Um, but anyway, the actual assembly of this thing did not take that long. Um, maybe only a few hours. Uh, I obviously condensed it and I've been recording this whole thing so uh, it obviously takes me a little bit longer. Um, but uh, I hope that you enjoyed this. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you could. It really does help me out a lot. Uh, I also have a TikTok with a whopping three things on there at this point in time. So not a whole lot on that one, uh, but it's just some of my funnier stuff. Um, I, I really enjoy being a goofball. So um, anyway, um, hope you enjoyed this and uh, I'll catch you on the next one.